Labour in the North West have had enormous success compared to Labour in the rest of England. It's a potential power base which could challenge Keir Starmer. He should be concerned about this. What he has done, though, it seems, is take a form of action which can only inflame tensions. Just before we went live today, we have learned that Keir Starmer sacked Angela Rayner from her roles as both the Labour Party chair and as the party's national campaign coordinator. Now, Aaron, to me, this seems wild. I mean, it's, it seems completely self-destructive. What Keir yeah. Starmer needs to do at this point in time is really hold together any coalition he, he can, because I think at this point in time, you know, we often say this, Labour members don't like wreckers, you know, that they don't like it when it seems yeah. like there's an unprovoked attack on someone who has a democratic mandate. But Keir Starmer's in an incredibly weak position at this point in time, and he is now, it seems, going to war with one of the most popular, actually, um, members of the, the Shadow Cabinet, and a member of the Shadow Cabinet who has connections to yeah. many of these popular, successful politicians in, in the Northwest. Like what? What's he doing? What's what's the, what's the plan here? It makes zero sense. It makes absolutely no sense. I mean, he's probably he's probably not slept. I mean, maybe this decision has been fueled by Jameson. You know, maybe he's had a bit too much to drink. No, I mean, I'm being serious. He did the interview yesterday, and he was saying, you know, we're going to take a few days, calm down, digest. And that's what you, of course, that's what we should do. And now he's they've done this. Uh, we're obviously hearing conflicting stories about that. But you're absolutely right. Before I talk about the sort of the the, the the conflicting stories and the fallout. It's important to say, you know, who is Angela Rayner? Yeah, she's she's from the Northwest. She's very much ensconced within that power, the power base of, of particular GMB, but the trade union movement in the Northwest. That is very much, you know, their the, the, the political base with her. She's um, imagine this, Michael. You've just lost a by-election uh, in Hartlepool, and you say, as a Southern middle-class lawyer, I'm going to take responsibility, and to do that. You fire the most prominent northern woman with a working class background on your sort of front bench in your top team. Does that sound to you like a particularly astute thing to do? Because I think it's, it's kind of up there with the most counterproductive measures you could do in response to what we've seen over the last 24 hours, 48 hours. It weakens Keir Starmer both internally and externally. Externally, because Labour are doing terribly because they're incredibly divided, because the right has openly declared war on the left for a year. Was like, oh, there's too much factionalism. They need to stop fighting each other. This is like saying, put me in a, a boxing room with Mike Tyson. Stop fighting each other. No, Mike Tyson would kill me in one punch. That's what you're seeing with the Labour leadership contra the, 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 the party's left. There is no infighting. All the fighting is going in one direction. And that's seemingly now getting worse. So it weakens him externally to the public. He just looks this ridiculous character who says he takes responsibility. He doesn't take responsibility. The only thing he's interested in is internal factional fights. But it also weakens him internally because, you know, Angela Rayner actually has, has far more networks within the Parliamentary Labour Party than Keir Starmer does. I would say she's one of the best networked politicians in the Labour Party. She has, she, she, she has contacts with those on the left those in the centre, some on the centre-right. She has geographic connections through the Labour movement. Uh, I, I, I find it astonishing. That said, you know, she was she was in charge effectively of the campaign. It was a very bad campaign. I get it. But to do this and now, and particularly after his response to the, the results, you know, yesterday he looked shambolic, ridiculous, absurd. He didn't look with it. This doesn't look like, uh, you know, the these don't reflect the actions of a man who is... Uh, is on top of his game, let's say. They look desperate. They look last ditch. They look like somebody who who, who might be out the door far sooner than we think. Mm, I mean, I also do think, you know, it wasn't a good campaign, but the reason it wasn't a good campaign is because there was no message, there was no vision, and it's not Angela Rayner's job. It's not the, the, the party chair's job to bring the message and the vision. That's the job of the leader. So, I mean, it, it seems like a bizarre response to me. We can get some more detail on this. And this is a tweet from Ben Kentish at LBC. So he tweets, a Labour Party source has said, Keir said he was taking full responsibility for the result of the elections, and he has said we need to change. That means changing how we run our campaigns in future. Angela will continue to play a senior role in Keir's team. So it's, it's, it's very much like what we've heard from Keir Starmer and his sources, people close to him, um, over the past two days, which is, I'm taking full responsibility, but it's also someone else's fault. I'm taking full responsibility, but it's Jeremy Corbyn's fault. I'm taking full responsibility, but now it's Angela Rayner's fault. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I think basically somebody had to carry the can for what's happened, and he's decided it's not going to be Jenny Chapman, who's that's who it should be, his chief political advisor. I talked about this last night. It was her decision to put Paul Williams as the candidate for Hartlepool. He was a Remainer in a seat that voted leave. He got thrown out. He lost the seat in 2019 because of that. Ditto for her and Darlington. So what does she do? She decides to get Paul Williams into Hartlepool, someone that voted 70% leave. You're dealing with real political numbskillism uh, with these people. And, and, and rather than make her carry the can, which would be the right thing to do, Keir Starmer said, nope, Jenny Chapman can stay where she is. She's organizing, you know, reshuffles at 5 a.m. over the phone from Hartlepool with no sleep. That seems like a bit of a rickety operation itself. No, no, leave her there. She seems really professional and competent. We're going to get rid of the most popular, uh, most networked, you know, sort of uh, politician who can unite the party against me. We're going to get rid of her instead. You have to ask the question, what does Jenny Chapman have on Keir Starmer? Why would you do that to, to Angela Rayner and keep Jenny Chapman in her role? So clearly somebody had to take the take, take, take the blame for this. And it's uh, it's an arbitrary decision, which can only backfire, I think. I think you're right to bring up Jenny Chapman. So I can just see, according to The Guardian, a senior Labour aide claimed there's a lot of pressure to sack her. Also, this is Angela Rayner from MPs and from staff. And then a Guardian report that MPs have, have been contacted by The Guardian on Friday and singled out other key figures for blame including Starmer's Chief of Staff, Jenny Chapman, as you're saying there, Aaron. There is one possibility here, which I suppose is in, potentially suggested by that final sentence in, in the Labour sources statement to Ben Kentis. Angela will continue to play a senior role in Keir's team. So it could be that this was actually you know, a reshuffle and she's going to get quite a high profile job in the shadow cabinet, but they just leaked the sacking before they leaked the, the new job. Although I suppose, presumably, if they've sacked her, it wasn't at her, at her will. They could have tried to persuade her, Angela, we think you'd be better as you know, shadow health or whatever. Do, do you think that she might end up with a, a role that's equally as important and then we might all think of this as a storm in a teacup? I just don't know why you would make any decisions now, Michael. I mean, they, they, this is given what's happened, given the internal he fighting. Said, he said he'd take responsibility and he said Labour must change. So change they must. Well, I think, Michael, for me, you know, Keir Starmer, when you, when you look at this country, you think, Carillion, how does that happen, the, the collapse of Carillion? Or how do these outsourcing giants keep on failing and yet they get new cushy contracts? It's because they never face the consequences. And that genre of leadership, which we see in those companies, is exactly what I see with Keir Starmer. You never take responsibility. Where there's a mistake, somebody else must have made it. And I think he comes from the very same kind of corporate political culture that that stuff emerges from. You know, there's a social phenomenon in this country where stuff goes wrong and nobody in charge seems to take any responsibility for it. And I very see that, you know, very much see that reflected in Keir Starmer.